Starting a new business is an exciting adventure. How often have you read or heard about a person very similar to yourself that took an idea and turned it into a multi-million dollar enterprise? Before they were working in a dead-end job, barely making ends meet. If they had continued down this path, they would have been doomed to a tedious, unsatisfying existence with no end in sight. Now, after their company has gone public or their franchise has been bought out, they have more money than they could possibly spend. Now they're financially secure. They have no debt. They have total freedom to do what they want, when they want. So how do these lucky few pull it off? One reason for their success is that they see the world differently than most of the people that punch a time clock. Most people see problems as something to avoid at all costs. Successful entrepreneurs, on the other hand, get excited when they encounter problems. To them, problems spell opportunity. To them, they see a problem as the keys to a unique product or service that many people will pay lots of money for. Now, some people would argue that this unique way of looking at the world is genetic. I would counter that it's just a matter of changing your perspective. Now, having a good business idea is an important first step. Without it, there's no reason to even start. But having a good idea is only a small fraction of what is needed to create a major business concern that churns out boatloads of cash into your bank account. Lots of people have good business ideas. Some are even brilliant. Sadly, though, only a small few become a successful business owner. So what separates the mere daydreamers from the reality makers? One major factor that separates the wildly successful entrepreneurs from their commonplace peers is that they're good planners. They break down their huge goal into bite-sized steps that when taken will eventually accomplish its fruition. They accomplish this by writing a business plan. Many people hate the thought of writing a business plan. In their minds, they look back at times when they were forced to write boring term papers or essays for school. Successful entrepreneurs, however, see writing a business plan in a whole different light. To them, writing a business plan is writing their success story. They go to great lengths to research and document how and why their business will be successful. They want to not only convince investors, but themselves that they truly have a unique product or service that solves an important problem. In their business plan, they tell the world why they are uniquely qualified to succeed in their business venture. They also want to show investors and themselves that they truly understand the necessary steps that are required to create a successful business. They do this by describing the risk mitigating milestones that when accomplished will signify that they're one step closer to having virtually no risk of failure. Another part of the business plan that separates the winners from the losers is the financial projections. When the average Joe gets to the financial projection portion of their business plan, their enthusiasm really starts to drain. Spreadsheets, oh my God, maybe I should do this tomorrow. Successful entrepreneurs, on the other hand, are a different animal. When writing their financial projections, they're getting excited, really excited. Who wouldn't when you can see in black and white the growing cash flow projections as their plan progresses? Now there are a number of ways to go about creating your business plan. One option is to use a generic template. Although generic templates will give you all the necessary ingredients to a business plan, it has its drawbacks. The big one is that it's generic. It does not possess the tools that will help you really juice up your business plan. It gets the job done, but will it have enough style to excite potential investors or personnel to come on board your project? Another way that many persons use to create a business plan is to find a business plan from the same category that's closest to their own business or industry. They then modify it to fit their own business plan. This method also has its negatives. The whole idea of writing a business plan is to show how your company is unique. It needs to demonstrate that you have a truly unique product or service that your personnel are uniquely qualified to run your business and to be competitive in the marketplace. 
The problem with modifying an existing business plan is that there will be a strong tendency for your business to be not that much different from what's already out there. The problem with that is that your competitors already have a head start on your business and that theirs is already established. The most ideal way to write a business plan is to use professional business planning software. This software will result in your business plan looking like it was created by a professional business plan writer at a fraction of the cost. Regardless of what method you use to write your business plan, the most important thing is to get it done. So what are the ingredients of a well-written business plan? The first item is a cover sheet. Its main purpose is to list the company's name and the contact information. It should also include a statement that says that this business plan is being provided under the assumption that the recipient is a qualified investor and that it will be used and redistributed for the sole purpose of evaluating the company as an investment opportunity. In addition, it should state that the business plan does not imply an offering of securities. These statements made up front are there to keep you out of trouble. The last thing you want to do is have the Securities and Exchange Commission breathing down your neck. The second item that you will need in your business plan is a table of contents. This is needed so that the reader can easily find items of interest. After the table of contents is the executive summary. In this section, you need to clearly and concisely describe how your management team, your product or service, and your marketing strategy have a very good chance of succeeding. The other pivotal element of the executive summary is your company's financials. Make sure your financials are credible and realistic. They need to show that you will be able to pay your expenses and at the same time generate profits worth getting excited about. Investing in startups is a risky venture. Therefore, you need to convince investors that the potential reward is well worth the risk. Remember that if you don't make a strong impression in the executive summary, you might as well fold up your tent and go home. The main body of your business plan will have five to six sections. The first section contains a description of your company. In this section, you have to convince investors that you have the management team that has what it takes to carry out your ambitious plan. The second part contains a description of your product or services. In this section, you need to describe the major problem your company will solve. Then you have to show how your product or service will be vastly superior to anything available in the market today. The third section of your plan is devoted to marketing research. It has to demonstrate that there will be a huge demand for your product or service. In this section, you will want to identify the typical buyer of your product or service. Describe how the marketplace currently solves the same need that will be solved more elegantly by your company in the future. Point out the deficiencies or problems that customers are encountering with what is currently available. Then outline how your company will provide a better solution to their problem. After that, summarize how many potential customers are out there that would potentially use your product. The fourth section of your plan describes your marketing and sales strategy. In this section, you will need to show how you will identify and sell to your customers. If your company is selling a product, you will need to describe how you plan to have it manufactured. If you plan on manufacturing your product, you will need to give a detailed overview of the manufacturing process. On the other hand, if you plan to outsource manufacturing, you will need to describe the company that will provide this service. The final section of your business plan contains your financial projections. In most cases, your financials should project your income, expenses, and profits over a period of four to five years. Many business plan writers are tempted to juice up their financial projections. Resist this temptation. Remember that you're mostly dealing with sophisticated investors. If they even get a whiff of deceit, you can bet they'll boot for the exits after coming to the conclusion that you're either an idiot or a dishonest person. Writing a good business plan is the first step in launching your new business. I urge you to check out newbusinesscreator.com to obtain templates and software that will help you create this important document.